How's it going everyone? Welcome to another YouTube video. In today's video, I'm talking about sort of how to find the calling that God has put onto your life. And this applies both to the entrepreneurs in my audience, which is most of you, as well as those of you who are not entrepreneur. You know, that's not something that you've been called to. Um, but I really do believe that I've found the calling that God has put on my heart as a man, you know, and I'm in my early 20s. I'm 23 years old and, you know, I'm married and I'm running this, you know, multi-million dollar a year business coming up on a $10 million a year business this year or maybe halfway through next year, kind of the trajectory we're on. And, you know, something, something could change, but if nothing changes, that's where we'll be, which is super exciting. And I just want to share like my experience just from the bottom of my heart, kind of what I've experienced and how I think that I've found it. So first of all, let me sort of take a second to define what I mean when I say God's calling. So a lot of people, they, they think God's calling is like a career path or it's even a person you're supposed to be with. Um, I actually think that God calls you to a certain posture as opposed to a certain um, outworld, out, out, outerly world thing, like a certain spouse or certain business model. When I say he calls you a certain posture, what I mean is he calls you to a certain attitude, a certain set of characteristics, and a certain way of doing things that then invites, you know, the further continued growth, multiplication, and blessing of those things. And so I think it's half the thing you're doing, maybe 40% the thing you're doing, and it's mostly how you're doing it that matters. Um, and so I think a lot of people get caught up in the thing that they're doing, but they don't really think that much about how it is that they're doing it. So I'm going to use my business as an example because it's by far, so far, outside of my marriage, one of my proudest achievements. Um, and I'm newly married, so I feel like my marriage is still like in development. You know what I mean? Um, but so my, my business, you know, I mean, I started a business three and a half, four years ago. I was in my parents' basement, and I just decided, look, I want to become independently wealthy. That's what I want for my future family, and kind of just wanted to prove it to myself. You know, there's this quote by a speaker named Jim Rohn, and he said, you should aim to become a millionaire not for the money, but actually for the character growth. And I've seen that to be ridiculously true. Like I've gone through more pressure and more hard decisions and leadership challenges and spiritual battles um, than anything else I've ever done in my entire life. Um, my marriage being a very close second, and I think it's going to be first very soon because of, you know, I mean, we're, we're only six months into being married. So like we're, we're very newly married. So um, I remember... I, was, I used, to, I mean, I've gone to the gym for like five years, and I remember after one workout, I was just kind of on this, I was in this spiritual place where I just felt the presence of God, and so I went out back to the back of the gym, and I got on my knees, and the sun was still rising, so I'd gotten up at like 4.30 or 5 a.m., and the sun was rising, and I just got on my knees, and I just prayed, and I begged God. I said, God, I need you to tell me what I'm supposed to do, because I'm 17. I was turning 18 very soon. I'd just gotten out of a relationship with a girl that I thought I was going to marry. Um, I genuinely did, but then this thing started not working out for various reasons. And I said, God, I need you to give me that clarity of what I'm supposed to do with my life. And he made it ridiculously clear, like, you need to go into business. And so I think tip number one t t t that I gather from that story is most people never take the time aside to l just genuinely ask. Like, how long has it been since you've just gotten on your knees and begged for clarity? And I, I found that God will give it to you when you just ask. When you just ask for that clarity, he will give it to you. I asked God if I was supposed to marry my wife. He said, yes, so I married my wife. I asked God what I was supposed to do in my life. He said, go into business, so I went into business. I asked God, you know, where, what I'm supposed to, I asked God, I pray about who I'm going to hire. I pray about the direction I'm going to take my business. You know, I try and give as much of it to God as possible because at the end of the day, you know, God will bless you with multitude so long as you are a good steward of what it is that he's granted you. Right. So the first tip is just ask. And I know that that sounds maybe trite and oversimplistic, but it's just true. When I ask, I get that clarity. And you have to ask from a place of not needing the answer to be a certain thing. Like, you know, for me, business was something that I somewhat always wanted to do. Um, and so I'm not going to lie and say like it was this massive course redirect. Um, but I ask often, I'm like, God, do you still want me to do this? Do you still want me to do this? And, you know, when I'm in those times of lack of clarity, I go back to God and ask him again, like, is this what you want me to do? 
and I've gotten yes over and over and over again, and now it feels like it's bigger than me, and I'd be letting a ton of people down if I didn't. You know, we've got so many people in our programs and products. I've got a whole team of, like, 25 people, and it's like, you know, I have to do this now. Um, so there's that. Just ask. The second one is prayer and fasting. So the second tip for getting clarity from God about your direction and what it is that you're called to is just to actually detach from worldly things. So... When I say detached from all these things, I mean detached from lust and sexual desire. I mean detached from, you know, hunger, your desire for food. Detached from your relationships. Just kind of, you know, you look at Christ and how he just, he just left to pray. You know, and I think if you look at, like, other, other religions, like Buddhism, for example, you know, they were on to something when they practiced... Um, detachment from worldly pleasures. You know, their whole their whole religious hierarchy is based you know, is based on the concept of enlightenment, and at the peak of enlightenment is when you have achieved a full disconnect from the worldly desires that you may be inundated with, which you know are like food, sex, pretty much everything, but maybe water. I believe is then some of them even like you know don't drink water for like a week and just it's crazy. Um, and there's some, there's some very real truth to that because I think being biological creatures, we have this almost like, almost like how you have an umbilical cord to your mother and you can't detach from your mother until you're born and it's cut. It's the same thing with being born again. Like when you're born again, the body tied to the world is cut and now you're no longer living in your body, but you're a spirit living through your body. And you have to remember that that's the case. You have to get back to a place of remembering that you are not your body that you are a living thing living in your body, that you are a soul, you're a spirit. And it's only in that place that I think you can get true spiritual clarity. You know, um, you know, in my business, even some of my best revelations about the direction of my business and what I'm supposed to do next and what the future is supposed to look like have come from time and time again, um, fasting. So I'll go, I'll go a whole day without eating when it's, when there's a lot of pressure on me, I'll go like two or three days even sometimes. And it sounds crazy, but You know, even look at some, like, business leaders. Like, if you look at, like, Steve Jobs, for example. Like, he was huge on, like, fruit fasts or, like, even water fasts. And I think there's just some truth to that. I think there's truth to, like, when you put your body aside, you put its needs aside, that you're going to get so much clearer on the spiritual nature of what's going on in your life, okay? And you'll be able to tap into God's word for you much easier. And there's a lot of scriptural precedent to this, you know I mean? So much scriptural precedent to prayer and fasting okay uh the third tip the third tip is to make sure that what you're asking for you're not you're not how do i say this the third tip is to make sure that you don't have anybody speaking into your life a direction that is their own for you so try and make sure that you're not you know just ask like am i being influenced by somebody else or is this a genuine actual calling from god like, is this something that's being, like, marketed to me or, like, something that I'm being, like, almost like a, a hook that's being hooked into my heart that's pulling me a certain direction? Or is this actually a genuine calling? And the way that I think you know the difference is if it's a genuine calling, odds are you're going to disappoint some people, right? Um, if it's not a genuine calling, you're going to make everybody happy. So everybody's going to be happy if it's not a genuine calling. I really do believe this. If, if it's a genuine calling, you're going to let a lot of people down. Because humans have their own selfish nature. So this is pretty hard for the people pleasers. You know, you have to get comfortable with, all right, this is what I'm being called to do. And it's legitimately uncomfortable for me, but I'm going to do it because I'm called to it. And, you know, no matter what people say, this is what I'm going to do. And so, I mean, you know, look at Christ. Like, he was the ultimate example of, like, you know, um, public rejection. You know, I mean, he got pinned to a cross and killed for the things that he stood for. And so, you know, you can go through a little bit of social rejection for a path in life that you want to go down. Now, I'm not saying you should actively look for paths in life to go down that make people upset with you. I'm just saying that odds are, if it's a genuine calling, you're going to make a lot of people upset. Um, and you have to really consider that. Because if you're making everybody happy, if, if all the 5, 10, 15, 20 people kind of in your circle or the circle around you are like impressed and happy with this decision you're making and are like rooting for you and everything, like there's, that's probably a bad sign because that means you're swimming with the tide. And when it's a genuine calling, odds are you're swimming very much against the tide. And that was my calling into business, you know what I mean? Like 
I'm, I'm lucky enough that I had a good support system. You know, my parents were very encouraging of my entrepreneurial career. But, you know, when you're 16, 17, um, the support of your friends, your girlfriend, uh, your close whatever, you know, the people in your immediate network, don't they, that matters so much more than your parents at the time. And so I remember feeling so much rejection from that group. Um, and I had to really deal with that. And I still do, you know what I mean? I, I feel like I still kind of feel like an outsider. Like I look at other people and their problems and I'm like, I just can't relate to that problem. And I feel very blessed by that, but also very, um, very disconnected, which is uh, an interesting thing. So that's the next tip is, if, is when you ask, when you go into prayer and fasting and you ask, is it a swim against the tide calling or is it a, yeah, this will make everybody happy calling, okay? Um, the next tip, the next tip is don't come to God asking for clarity um, just because where you are right now isn't satisfactory. So what I mean by this is like, you know, you can be dissatisfied with your life and go to him and ask, but I think in my experience that he doesn't want to like come in and just blindly solve our problems. Like at least hasn't been my experience. He's made me stronger. Like it's that quote, like I asked God for wisdom. So he gave me challenges to make me wiser. I asked I asked God for strength. So he put pressure on me to make me stronger. Right. It's the same thing. Like he's not just going to come in and, and swoop in and take all your problems away necessarily. He can't do that. But in my life, it's been, he's made me stronger and more resilient, more of a man every step of the way. And so, you know, personally, I try and go to God, not just as a genie and as something that I can just like call on when I need that help, which I do. But more often, it's just like making sure that I'm still serving him with the path that I'm on, Um, which is, I think, the best place to ask from. Now, the scriptural precedent that God comes in and saves you and he will be there in your hardest, darkest times. And that's for sure. But I think it's more of a heart posture thing that I'm talking about. Like your heart has to be aligned with God. What do you want from me? Not God, please get me out of this crazy situation. Right. Those are two different things. And he can do the Get me out of this crazy situation. But I think in my personal experience, he's honored more the God what do you want from me right now? Like, what would make me a better servant of you and a better steward of the life that you've given me? And I think when you ask from that heart posture, there's a lot more clarity. Okay, um, and then the final tip, yeah, and so the final tip for, for getting that clarity is just make sure that you're actually spending time in the Word, you know, because Scripture, the Bible, is the Word of God, right? And that's at least my theological hierarchy is I believe that the Bible is the word of God. And it was, you know, sent to man be, to be written by the hands of men, but out of the mouth of God it was spoken, right? And um, in that way, you know, you don't really know God unless you're in the scriptures, right? Unless you're act- actively learning from God. And so, you know, it would be like asking somebody, asking, it'd be like asking a relative who you haven't talked to in 10 years what their advice is on a specific thing in your life. Like, they don't know you, right? So how could they advise you if they don't know you? And so, a lot of the time, I think a relationship with God is almost a preventative thing. It's almost like a, you know, you do it because like over time the rewards are just so great versus, um, you know, something you come back to just when you're struggling. And again, I think that's probably a majority of the people who would be attentive to this video are going to be people who have experienced that sense of confusion and need that clarity, which probably speaks to a place in life where you are right now where you're not satisfied. But I want you to know that the, f- the closer you get to God, the clearer, the clearer, clearer he's going to make everything in your life. And there will be times of lack of clarity, but I don't believe that that's because, I don't believe that that's for any reason other than either A, God needs you to go through that lack of clarity for a reason, or B, he wants you to come back to him, or C, you, you, aren't, you aren't with him right now. And so he's giving you that clarity, but you're not listening. Um, that kind of brings me to a final tip is, you know, when you know, you know. And if you ignore that voice and you ignore God's calling on your life, then you're going to build up a form of like debt in the form of like repayments to him of life decisions that weren't really on the life path that he had for you. And so that's what I believe to be true. And that's what I've tried to live by in my life. And it's led to where I am today where I'm pretty happy. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm, (laughs) I mean, 
when I think about the blessings that I have, um, it's ridiculous, honestly. But at the same time, you know, I know that there's a lot of room to grow. So this is my advice, you know, and, and, and maybe you can take it and, and, and use it for your own needs and uh, wants and desires. And I'm curious your thoughts. Leave your thoughts in the comments. You know, I'm, I'm trying to make a YouTube video every day um, just to document sort of the season and just share some lessons. So if you want any more content from me, just let me know, and I'll keep making it. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.